there are a lot of people who come out and say, here are the 10 best techniques you should use as a teacher, right? Here are your hots, here are your nots. Do these, don't do these things. And here you start to see that kind of argument is gonna fall flat. There is no one thing that's gonna work all day, every day. What we need to do is align those practices to the learning trajectory. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's From Theory to Practice, where I take a look at the research so you don't have to. Now, the article I've selected this week is my favorite article from last year, 2022. I think this is the best article published, and it's called Sequence Matters. Retrieval practice before generative learning is more effective than the reverse order by Roel and colleagues. Now, to understand this paper, we have to realize that most people talk about learning as though it is an event or a thing. But in truth, learning is a long process. It is a trajectory. Typically, that learning trajectory starts with what we call surface learning, moves through three levels of deep learning, and then tails out with kind of transfer slash adaptive learning. Now, as you can guess, the learning strategies that work best at each of these levels are necessarily going to be different. The things that work best for someone at the surface level aren't going to be the same strategies that work for someone at deep three or adaptive. As we move through the learning trajectory, our study techniques will necessarily evolve. Now, to understand this paper, we have to kind of dive deeply into surface learning and deep one learning. What are these? So surface learning is just the intake of facts. That is where we take in new information and build semantic memory. So this is where we construct our knowledge. Now deep one says now that you've got all these facts, how do they fit together? How do we organize them into coherent units or chunks to understand their relationships and build concepts in the brain? So the easiest way to understand it, surface learning is based on facts, bits of information. Deep level one is based on concepts. How are we glomming together, organizing that information into coherent units? Now that's where this paper comes in. So these researchers realized, okay, we've got two very strong study techniques that everyone says works well. One is called retrieval practice. This is when you pull up specific memories from your own brain, say through flashcards, or quizzes or practice tests. And the other is called generative learning. This is when you start organizing ideas, say through concept maps or metaphors or hierarchical structures. Now, if the learning trajectory is accurate, then these researchers said, look, these two different techniques should work differentially based on when we use them, when we apply them during a student's learning. So they gave 158 students 10 minutes to read through an expository text that outlined eight brand new concepts, things they had never learned about before. Now, to make sure this was all brand new material, every person first took a pretest to see what they already knew. And anyone who knew too much wasn't allowed in the study. And those few people who knew like little bits and pieces here and there, that kind of pretest score was going to be used to offset the scores they got on later tests. So bear with me, just know that pretest occurred. Now, after they did the reading, there was a five minute break. Following this, one group of students undertook three rounds of retrieval practice. Essentially, they were presented with one of the concepts, they had to mentally come up with the definition of that concept themselves, and then they were able to check that answer to see how accurate it was. So three rounds of that. Another group of students underwent generative learning. So in this case, they were presented with the topic and its full definition, and they simply had to come up with two concrete examples for each of those concepts. And a third group simply spent 10 minutes rereading the text, so essentially restudying the same material. Now, after this, there was another five minute break, then the study condition switched. So the group that had originally done retrieval now did the generative task. The group that had done the generative task now did the retrieval task, and the restudied group simply restudied. Now, after this, they each took two exams to test their knowledge and understanding of what they had just read. One test immediately after the experiment and one 24 hours later to see what happens with that delay. And here's what they found. Now, for the group that simply reread the text three times, immediately after this study, they showed a 39% gain over their pretest scores. The group that did the generative activity first and then the retrieval practice showed a 54% gain over their pretest score. And the group that did retrieval first and generative second showed a 62% gain over their pretest score. So, as you can see, both generative and recall are strong techniques. They both did a lot better than simply restudying, rereading, but they weren't equivalent. The group that did recall first appears to have learned a little bit more than the group that did generative first. But let's go back. Remember, they retested them 24 hours later. So let's see what happens one day later. For the group that simply reread, their scores dropped to 31% improvement, so about an 8% drop. For the generative first recall second group, their scores dropped to 49% improvement, so about a 5% drop. And for the retrieval first generative second, theirs dropped to 58%, so only a 4% drop and still 9% higher than the other study group. 
So again, not only do we see that techniques matter, but we also start to see that the order of the techniques start to matter. Now, why might this be? Go back to the learning trajectory. Remember, every human being has to start at surface learning. This is where we are simply building memories, building knowledge. Now, retrieval practice is all based on building memories and knowledge. All you're doing is accessing ideas, reconsolidating them. Accessing ideas, reconsolidating them. Essentially, you're making deep memories. Retrieval practice is really strong at the surface level. Whereas generative learning, how do these ideas fit together? How do we glom them into units? That's aligned more with deep level one. How do we organize our facts into concepts? So this paper demonstrates that when we align our pedagogical and study practices with where we're at on the learning trajectory, with no additional effort or work, our learning will start to boost up simply because we're paying attention to where we're at on that learning process. So, okay, let's bring this back for us. What does this mean for us as teachers? Well, first things first is here. There are a lot of people who come out and say, here are the 10 best techniques you should use as a teacher, right? Here are your hots, here are your nots. Do these, don't do these things. And here you start to see that kind of argument is gonna fall flat. There is no one thing that's gonna work all day, every day. What we need to do is align those practices to the learning trajectory. It's not that this technique works. We need to be saying this technique works best when students are at say deep one, but when they move into deep two, it's time to put that strategy away and maybe pull out this other strategy. So I think it's great. All this research that has gone into saying, you know, what's effective, what's not, I think that was a wonderful start, but now it's time for us to start getting nuanced. It's not what are the 10 best, what are the 10 worst? It's when do all of these align with the learning trajectory? And bring that back, I think the number two thing we can take away is as schools, we're constantly looking for the right or the best answer. And that's why a lot of schools kind of align with specific things. We are an, an IB school. We are a PBL school. We are a this school. We are a that school. And once you start to recognize that learning isn't a thing, it's a trajectory, you start to see you can't be a school. There is no one system that's going to work across the board. We got to be all of them schools. Our jobs as teacher isn't to find the one right way to teach and learn. There's never going to be one right way. Our job is to collect all the different techniques, all the different strategies and tools, put those into our toolkit and start to align them. And I think this shines a lot of light on some of the debates that people have been having. Like there's a big debate going on now between uh, knowledge rich curriculum and problem based learning. One is better than the other. This one we should be doing, not this one. And you start to see, no, they both work just at different times. Knowledge based curriculum, as you can guess, is really good where at the surface level. Problem based learning, where now I got to start to organize and think about ideas that starts to become really powerful right around deep one, deep two. So it's not that things work or don't work, it's simply when will they work or not work. So thank you all so much for hanging out with me. I hope you got something good. As I said, that was my favorite paper from last year. I think it speaks volumes to where we're at in our current discussion with learning and teaching and education. But if you like what you saw, if you can give us a thumbs up and subscribe below. Otherwise, thank you guys so much and I'll see you all next time. Bye y'all.